We've gone through our first off season, and today, the action finally begins in the Las Vegas Raiders franchise rebuild. Welcome everybody, we're getting into our first full season today with week one, the debut of quarterback Denzel Stockton, and a new start for the Las Vegas Raiders. Now before we get into the first game, I asked last episode if you wanted to see any preseason. Now today we are getting into week one, but... I got some preseason clips for you as well as we get a first look at the team here today. The main thing I wanted to see is if any of the new additions would stand out and how quarterback Denzel Stockton would play. Now we open things here defensively. We added some big name free agents, mainly at corner. So it was very concerning to give up an immediate deep ball touchdown to DK Metcalf, who ran by Jalen Johnson. Now, I did have Kirk Cousins get the starts here in the preseason just to get stocked in more of the playing time. There's Josh Jacobs getting a good run, and then Cousins here. Give him time, and he will cook. That one is caught by Trey Tucker, one of these young playmakers you want to see step up. And speaking of, Michael Mayer catches the touchdown of Cousins, and he should be the number one tight end this year. I'm really hopeful for Michael Mayer. Now we jump ahead later in this first half, and we have Geno Smith getting jumped in, picked off by Devin White, ending this drive. The defense wasn't looking promising until that takeaway, and that helps set the stage for Denzel Stockton's preseason debut. I was excited to see his ratings, but now I want to see how he plays. I know he's got a strong arm. He's very accurate. First throw here is shy of the sticks, and that ended the drive. We go to the defense here, and this is Easton Stick going up top, and the pass is broken up by one of the undrafted free agents I signed. That is Jalen Jeffries out of Maryland. And then watch the run down here by Devin White. Man, strong first impression of him in the preseason. Back to Stockton, a laser on the slant here to Keelan Cole. That one is cut. Stockton, I noticed he got the ball out very quickly, very accurately as well. Zamir White nearly scores on the catch. Comes back the next play and walks in for the score. Stockton later feeling the pressure and running up field for around eight yards can certainly make some things happen out of the pocket. And then back on the slant, he hits Cole again. This one goes inside the 10. Nothing too exciting through the air. And then it's Antonio Gibson helicoptering into the end zone and capping off another Raider touchdown drive. We got Stockton later. This one's third and 12. And he drives the pass downfield and with the receiver that open, you like to see a more accurate ball. Now, Zamir White got hurt on this play, and unfortunately, it would end his preseason. That pass knocked away, and that is the quarterback, Jacorian Bennett, second-year player. We got Stockton downfield again. Looks like he led Keelan Cole to the sideline. But we get it inside the five. Stockton scanning and then fires for the touchdown to Ben Sims. One of the tight ends trying to make this team. Seahawk football now on a third and seven. Easton Stick jumped in, intercepted. And that's Jack Jones, who is slotted to be our number three corner this season, probably playing in the slot. I think this secondary has a chance to be pretty good. We got the Raiders in the red zone here in the four. Stockton off the mark and actually was throwing that at Devontae Adams, but he does get intercepted, and that would pretty much bring an end to this game. Some ups and downs for the rookie in his preseason debut, as you expect. We didn't really seem to push the ball downfield a ton, just... 5.9 yards per attempt, but an overall solid start for Stockton in his debut. I wanted to see him, you know, show that he's ready to be the week one starter, although at 80 overall, you're not really expecting there to be a lot of drama there. 
But let's go into game two. And now I screwed up recording on this one. I only have a quarter and a half of this. That's Christian Wilkerson on the catch. Stockton then, third and nine. Off the mark, trying to throw outside the numbers. Giants football, third quarter, getting pressure and taking down the quarterback. Nesta Jade Silvera in his second year makes the play. Ball goes back to the Raiders and out on the edge, the speed of Antonio Gibson. He got a lot more carries with the injury to Zamir White naturally. Here's another run to the right side. He spins off a tackler and gets the first down. I was high on Gibson coming out of Memphis. Was unfortunate to see him lose his role in Washington. Now we got him here and Stockton can't outrun the rush for long. He gets taken down. I don't think he's going to escape a lot of sacks. I think he will here or there, especially slower interior rushers. That was one of the better throws I thought from Stockton in terms of down the field, distance, and the traffic. But I feel like the receivers just don't have the skills here with the second unit to create a lot of downfield opportunity. Third and 10 later in the game, and we get the pressure on the quarterback. Divine Diablo makes that play. We wind up winning this second game as well. Stockton goes 8 for 12, 104 yards, a touchdown, and no interception in this game. Now, I've been busy the last handful of days, so I just had these recording while I was out of the room. Otherwise, I probably would have made better note to get some other guys playing time like Shakir Cheney, the seventh round running back. But here's one player that makes the team because of his preseason play. That is Tyler Hall on the kick return. Right up the hash into the end zone. He scores on Minnesota. Vikings got a new quarterback this year. And we welcome him to the NFL. That is intercepted again by Jack Jones. So he's solidifying his role as the number three corner. Now, this is later in the first half. Vikings had just scored. It's 17-12. They kick it again to Tyler Hall. Across midfield, a foot race that he will win for the second time. You double dip in one half, you make the team. The rules are that simple. Offense has it later on. Denzel Stockton down the field. Devontae Adams. And he scores. Spins away and then just can't get in. So frustrating he couldn't get those last few yards. We go to first and goal, though. Toss it out. Josh Jacobs, touchdown Raiders. Good showing. But we had to turn it over to Kirk Cousins here in Minnesota as his welcome back. Cousins for Gibson. Touchdown. Raiders pouring it on in this preseason finale. We'd quickly get the football back and let Cousins do it again. Caught for the score, Christian Wilkerson that time. And one final play I've got for you. Vikings down a million from the 31. Mike White is intercepted. Christopher Smith on the interception. I felt like preseason went really well. We won all three games and look good doing it. Now let's go through some numbers and this final roster. Denzel Stockton went for two touchdowns, one pick in 427 yards. I thought his preseason was good. Kirk Cousins was great, but I want to play the rookie. When we signed Cousins, I wasn't sure what would be the next move for us, but Stockton is not going to be on the bench. I'm not sure what ultimately happens here with Kirk. We could look to trade him at some point, but I'm not going to do so right away. I did get rid of the ugly 19, though. I didn't think that would be uh, much of a fan favorite there for the number on him. Antonio Gibson, 201 yards. Josh Jacobs, 131. I wish I had maybe babysat the recording a little bit more so I could have gotten Shakir Cheney some carries, our seventh round rookie running back. Devontae Adams, 88 yards, and then the tight ends combined here. Mayer and Ben Sims had a lot of catches. Jacoby Myers had 10. 
But one thing I feel is very evident from the preseason games is outside of Devante, not many big play threats in this passing game. Devin White's numbers are pretty eye-popping. 26 tackles, 5 for a loss, 1.5 sacks with an interception. Could this be a huge signing for this defense? We're going to give him an upgrade here and get some tackling and zone coverage. But really excited to see what this signing turns into. We ultimately ended up signing him to the four-year deal, or you're probably not getting a player of his caliber. So, good start, at least in the preseason. For the pass rush now, Matthew Butler had two and a half sacks. And then Divine Diablo had one and a half as well. Overall, not much from the pass rush. And we're really hoping here this season that Tyree Wilson takes a step and keeps me from feeling like this team still needs more of an edge presence. There's also Malcolm Kuntz who had, I believe, eight sacks in 2023. And then we collected five interceptions and we really did a good job in the middle of the field. And Jack Jones also shined. And he's our number three. So now it's time to go through final cuts. And that wasn't too difficult. I made a few practice squad signings and I'm trying to turn over the roster for the backups and bottom of the roster players anyway. I'm already at 53, so I don't have to make any more cuts, but there are certainly more spots I'm going to be looking to replace as we move forward. And we'll also make some practice squad signings. We'll start here with quarterback Matt Corral. We have an intriguing rookie running back here in Sergio Godwin who can catch the football really well and has a decent start in a lot of areas. Right now, good change of direction, has some juke moves, but I think as a receiving back to develop, hopefully no one picks him off our practice squad. I want to get some speed on there as well. Like this receiving core, I feel, is going to really need some juice at some point. I don't think a practice squad signing is going to solve many problems, but I'll look to some of those areas that were kind of lacking for practice squad depth. I might even go with a couple deep threats here. So here's what we have going into the real first year of the series. We've brought in a couple new starters on offense with Denzel Stockton, the quarterback, Sean Childress at left guard, and then I also had signed John Runyon to be the right guard. I'm not so sure how reliable this right side is going to be with Thayer Munford taking over as the starting right tackle, but I do like his ratings for a 71 overall a lot. Defensively, you've got the cornerstone player there and Max Crosby, and hopefully Tyree Wilson takes a step. I brought in two big-time proven corners to be our number one and two, Jalen Johnson, Legereus Sneed. Then we bring in Devin White, and that already looks to be a pretty solid signing. And I know this is structured here to be a 3-4. I think I'm actually going to go and just make this a 4-3. It's just honestly easier. I find the 3-4 uh, the defense and moving positions to just kind of be a little bit annoying, especially when so many teams just play in their nickel defense all the times these days. And then here's a look at the practice squad that I have so far. I'm going to hire our scouts now for year one, and it looks like we got good quarterbacks at the very top. We have three at one, two, three, and then a fourth quarterback at eight. Hopefully that's not on our radar any longer. I don't see a lot of early projected players, but receiver is definitely going to be one of our targets as I think this team definitely needs more speed and you've got to be more prepared for what's to come after Devontae Adams. The biggest problem area on the team though, I'd say is defensive tackle. Our best player there is 70 overall Jerry Tillery. So obviously we should look to see what the early round picks offer us and there should be some options. I should do a clickbait thumbnail for this one and say that we signed Calvin Johnson in my Raiders rebuild. It's technically true. So here are the areas I'm hoping we can address in next year's offseason. But let's forget about the offseason for a while. Let's talk about week one, getting this series really underway with our first game. Right off the bat, I think we need to start, you know, showing this is a good offensive football team. We have two Really good players there and Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs. We trade all the way up for a quarterback. This better be a good offense. Focused with more of the passing game in mind. Although, 
I don't care if we end up running the football a little bit more. I, I do have more of an interest of building some ground and pound teams these days. I think it's a fun counter for the way a lot of defenses are built too with these lighter linebackers and two deep safeties. It just really, it really dares offenses to start building more for the run. So let's go set our expectations for Denzel Stockton's debut. I, I want to see him show flashes. I don't know what the difference is from these. I'm going to go show flashes though. I think that we're going to see some mistakes early on, some ugly interceptions, some inaccurate throws. But if the flashes are there, I think we'll be able to get the job done. And right now for our focus players, I have Stockton, of course, and then Tyree Wilson. I really want this pick to work out so I don't have to kind of start over there opposite Max Crosby. And then Sean Childress, trying to get him up to speed a little bit faster. And right off the bat, you're telling me Max Crosby's not playing our first game. He suffers a practice injury. So does Robert Spillane. So, like, the two best players on the 2023 Raiders defense are not playing in week one. Wow. I also forgot to mention we had a couple injuries from the preseason games. We have Zamir White missing one game, and then Nick Leverett, our backup guard, is also going to miss a couple. So, no Zamir White. We'll see if that running back spot ends up being crucial at all. I expect Jacobs to handle the load. But now, we got to go up against the Jaguar offense. A little shorthanded on defense. We need this secondary now to help lead the way. Before we get started, we do have a couple upgrades to go through here. I'm not sure how much longer I would expect Hunter Renfro to be on this team. Probably going to try to move on after the Raiders really phased him out of the offense the last couple years. Here's the rookie corner, Marcus Blades took him late in the draft and we're focusing on his man coverage right off the bat. And then also getting an upgrade here for Hunter Jordan, backup linebacker, up to a 65 overall. Jeez, I didn't realize what they did to Trevor Lawrence with uh, the ratings in the recent updates. I don't think he's been phenomenal in the NFL, but uh, they got him in the mid-70s now. And here we go, everybody. Week one of the 2024 NFL season. The rebuild really gets underway, and we'll see how much work we've already accomplished in our first offseason. It's been a while since I've been doing content like this, around 10 months or so, going back to the start of the MLB season a year ago. But I hope you're all ready for the return of this content. I know that I was getting questions daily. Didn't matter what I was posting. A lot of people wanted to know when content like this would return. Hopefully we have a strong debut to this series, a strong return to this style. And we have some fun here with the Las Vegas Raiders. And one of the cores of the series here that I do is I am more the GM, I manage the team, we watch the games play, which really highlights player ratings, makes the playing field a lot more even, because you don't have to worry about sliders or differences between the user and CPU, and it's just a really fun experience. Our defense is up first, facing Trevor Lawrence in the Jags offense. So we should be seeing Malcolm Kuntz along with Tyree Wilson get the start as the edge rushers. D-Line's got their work cut out for them, and the season opens with a big tackle for loss from Tyree Wilson. Those are really good. Those can help trigger breakout scenarios. Plays like that are really helpful. Wilson's going to be playing on the bottom of the screen. Kuntz on the top, replacing Max Crosby. It's a second down run, and the play made by Divine Diablo. The best name on this defense and one of our starting linebackers. Third down and 13 on the opening drive. Trevor against the blitz is taken down and the pass incomplete. Good sequence. Let's get the ball. We saw him in preseason. Tyler Hall made the team after two kick return touchdowns in the preseason. Also had a long return beyond like the 40 as well in one of those games. 
But here is the NFL debut. Denzel Stockton in the new era for the Raiders offense. Already an 80 overall. You're only getting that if you're willing to give up as much as we did to get up to number two. And here we are. Two receivers, top of your screen. Josh Jacobs is the running back. First play is a run. Jacobs redirecting and gets about three. One of the annoying things within Madden is that we still see this play out where the slot receiver gets most of the simulated targets. I just put my number one as the slot so they sim better. But when we're actually in games, I'd rather have Renfro in the slot because I, I don't think he's a good fit outside. So having Devontae stay outside is a much better proposition. Second down and seven out of the gun. A second run. It's Jacobs for a few. And it might be time to let the rookie loose. Third and three. Back to pass. And his first completion. It is to Hunter Renfro and a first down. This is the New England playbook. As I see things I don't like or want to change, I'll be editing this playbook to make it my own. It's actually really cool what you can do. As Stockton fakes, fades away, and misses Devontae Adams. You're effectively able to make your own play calling AI in this game. You can choose what plays you want in a variety of scenarios, and then the game will just call plays based off of that. And it's pretty fun. Jacobs gets a couple. I prefer this over doing like coach mode because believe it or not, I don't want to call the plays. This is a lot faster and I can create the playbook with uh, what I want called in each situation anyway. Third and seven, a deep ball, Stockton off the mark. He wanted Trey Tucker that time. He was double covered and now we're gonna bring out the punt team. Yeah, 61 yard field goal here is iffy. I have no idea what the win situation is, but Jags get it back. So I don't always watch every play of every game here. After the first couple drives, I will often sim some of the possessions in the second or third quarters. Big run here. Travis Etienne gashing the defense out to the 37. My goal is to watch the beginning of games, you know, get a feel for what kind of game it's going to be. Do some simming in the second or third quarter, shorten the game a little bit, but if any drives get into the red zone, we'll watch those. And then of course you watch the end. We might watch the whole thing today. We'll see how my mood is. First and 10, Lawrence off his spot, just dives in front of Devin White instead of getting smoked. Second down, and Lawrence has it knocked away. It's Legereus Sneed. I love the duo we already have. This is the kind of duo you can spend years trying to build. We did it in one offseason because we had the money. And this one is knocked away as Lawrence is 0 for 3. Devin White swats it down. We're on 11-minute quarters, 20-second runoff in the three games that we did the preseason. I liked the number of plays that we had, and my target is basically whatever the other teams in the league are playing, which, from what I've seen, is around 115 plays per game, not including any kicks. And on 11-minute, 20-second runoff, you get right about there. Second drive underway, Stockton out of the shotgun. Back to pass. Got time, and that one is broken up for Jacobs. Devontae in motion on second down and dropped off. Pass caught by Adam Troutman. Six yards. It's a slow start to this game. Both teams just taking their baby steps. Dumped off now to Josh Jacobs, and that's shy of the marker. One thing that also becomes a lot more evident when you play the game this way is player traits will stand out more. It's a run to ETN. Not much on that. So with the quarterbacks, often you'll get to know their play personality. Like, do they check it down a lot? Do they take a lot of shots? How do they respond to pressure? 
That's one of the things I want to see early. Stuffing that run as well. These teams can't get moving. And as well for running backs, some have excellent vision, some don't, and it becomes apparent who's who. These drives have been atrocious. And I do these games on all pro difficulty with default sliders, but I will mess with injury as I see fit. I've played this way for a number of years, and you'll get shootouts, low-scoring games, great games, bad games. You'll get it all. We got an ugly one here to start. Jacob's now running into a wall. I also downloaded the newest patch for Madden. I actually couldn't even get into the game without downloading it. I've never seen that before. Jacob's again has nowhere to go, and he is shaken up on the play. I've also knocked the injury rating or the injury slider down to 10 because injuries have been really common in my recent games I've seen with anything above 10. So Jacob's out, Antonio Gibson in, third down, Stockton on the move, he's got him open, Jacoby Myers. First down. I want to see how well Stockton can extend plays. Make the off-script throw, and that's a really nice pass. Would also like to get Devante going here early. But we bring in the fullback now. That is Nolan Irwin. Play fake for Stockton. And Irwin's now in the catch column. Pressure coming. Stockton beats the blitz. And Antonio Gibson takes us down inside the 30. We have the first scoring threat of the year. Took a few drives, but now we have it at the 26. I'm thinking Gibson here, or maybe a fake. Pass downfield, broken up for Myers. I worry that there's going to be a lot of plays like that because outside of the route running, we don't have the athleticism to help separate. It can be tough here in Madden. To the wide side, Gibson has the edge and a first down. Great run to the six, he goes for 20. This could end up being a pretty big signing after all, especially with Jacobs in no rush to re-enter. Zamir White's hurt. Now goal to go. Gibson up the gut, plows his way to the one. This means right now that Shakir Cheney, the seventh round rookie, would be the next running back in line. Gibson stays in. Irwin leads right. Gibson in for the touchdown. And the Raiders strike first. Antonio Gibson gets the series first touchdown. Remember that. Now I can't imagine Trevor Lawrence stays completionless for long. Jaguar football, no passing yards. They'll run it. And all over the field. Well, all over that area of the field has been Divine Diablo. Madden doesn't exactly disguise blitzes very well, so here comes Trayvon Merrig, and they throw it right into his void, and Lawrence finally completes to Evan Ingram. Hand off, and Wilson is there to stop Kirk. That might count as a TFL, and if you get a couple of those, sometimes you trigger one of those breakout scenarios. To keep this drive moving, four receivers, including Ingram, on third down. Time for Lawrence. Now it runs out, and he's taken down. Kuntz is there with Tillery. Pretty ugly start here for the Jag offense. Feeling good about our defense right now. And we take over a run, and back in the game, Josh Jacobs, seven yards. Stocked into the air. Stocked in. That's incomplete. It's pretty close to a fumble. Trips left. Just the tight end on the right side. Third down. Caught by Jacoby Myers. So one thing I've already seen with Stocked in is he gets the ball out pretty quick. Does it again up the seam and finally has Adams. And that goes for a 21-yard first down. What I don't want to see is him a little too willing to check down when a play needs more time to develop. Sometimes guys just really want to get the ball out quick no matter what. 
But Stockton has taken some shots as well. Second down and 10. They give him time, and that one is incomplete. You don't want to take a sack at this area. Here's Stockton. He's got him! Caught by Myers! Down to the one. Narrowly missing his first touchdown pass. We take it inside the one after Gibson had the touchdown on the last drive. Irwin in, leading the way for Josh Jacobs, first of the year. Excellent start for Vegas. Extra point got blocked. I usually end up simulating a lot of the kickoffs and extra points. S saves a little time, and they're usually gimmies, but not all the time. So the Jaguars have nothing right now, and Lawrence will get it across the middle. That's Ingram. He's yet to complete it to anybody else. Marcus Epps, the strong safety creeping down, and the pass caught by Ingram. And he puts the Jaguars in field goal range. ETN stuffed, and that's the rookie Hunter Jordan. Right side, wrapped up on the play. That's Marcus Epps, who looks to be one of the captains of this defense. Third and seven for the Jags, looking to get on the scoreboard. Trevor Lawrence facing a four-man rush. Downfield and a sliding grab by Calvin Ridley. Spreading the secondary on second down, ETN with uh, a couple yards there. I don't really get the second and 12 run. You really put all your eggs in the third and long basket now. Lawrence scanning and caught for the touchdown. Evan Ingram has been a problem. And the Jaguars finally have points. I do think this could be something teams do often against us because of our corners, but we actually get the matchup here with Sneed on Ingram, which should be favorable, but a really good route. But when the corners are lined up on the receivers, I do expect the tight ends to get a lot of volume against us. And off, and Jacob starts with a good run. This is where your game management is crucial. If you play this right, you can own the last three minutes of this half. And then you get the ball to start the second. Jacobs, oh, that's trouble, and Trayvon Walker takes him out. Momentum slipping away, although you'll notice I have no momentum on here. I think it's just done too gimmicky. I don't like the feature. Stockton, he's gonna get hit and sails! It's nearly picked off! But the Jags are getting it back. AJ Cole boots it. Good kick, too. From inside the 15, decent run back, and the Jags now have a two minute drill with a chance to go and take the lead. We've outplayed them to this point, but. Football doesn't work that way. It's not always who plays better has like the amount of points that reflect how well they've played. That's a good run now for ETN. It's been a slow start for these running games. Four man rush, clean pocket and intercepted. It's dumped off right to Devin White. And Trevor Lawrence makes a critical error here in the final minutes of the first half. And you got to get points off takeaways. A minute 36 to go for the Raiders. Stockton gets it out quickly. And Devontae Adams down the sideline. Touchdown. Stockton's first touchdown pass goes to Devontae Adams. Not really a fun trivia question because it's the obvious answer. Pretty sick play though. Good route, good ball too. And then spinning out of that tackle of Campbell. Devante gets us back up two scores. 
In these series, we don't even come close to watching every game. We end up probably watching four to six a year, and sometimes it's not every game watched in full. I'll watch half a game sometimes, but, you know, I'm trying to tell the story of this team's season. We'll mix in watched games with simulated games, and as the season unfolds, it'll become obvious which of the big games we want to watch. If there's a stretch of the season, we're okay simulating, especially in the rebuilding years if you're kind of solidified as not a very good team. That's a good catch by Ingram. But if you're like 4-10, there's not a lot of reason to watch those last three games. But if you're 10-4, and four, sometimes those are the ones that decide seeding in division titles. You'll get it if you stick around. Lawrence has time, delivers to Christian Kirk. So they're trying to cut into this lead now before half. Kind of critical they do as we get the ball in the third. Play fake. Lawrence slings a pass into no man's land. Diablo's over the top of Ingram. Third down. He's been one of the go-to guys. And he does it again. First down. One timeout remains for Jacksonville. Knocked away by Marcus Epps. Jaguars keep preserving their last timeout. Third and short. Pressure coming. Knocked down. Malcolm Kuntz dropping into coverage gets a pass breakup. And they're going to leave the offense out there. I love that teams get more aggressive now in this game. That's a full yard to go, though. More than a yard. Lawrence. Caught. Zay Jones. Always seems to be there for a big catch. And maybe one more play now. Snapped at seven. Passes caught. Dingram to the one. Timeout, Jags. And now they'll settle for their three. Evan Ingram has gone over 100 yards, by the way, as the Jaguars make it 20 to 10. I'm not sure how long this episode is going to be. It's the first big game, the first game of the series, and there's some preseason clips. Josh Jacobs says, wait a minute! Gashing the defense for 30 plus. But if you watch my baseball content, you're used to one hour long videos, sometimes longer. Rarely the videos in these types of series for me reach that length. Kind of 40 minutes is more the wheelhouse. Good push again, Jacobs. Eight yards. But I think we're watching the full game today, unless it becomes like a four-score game at some point. Jacobs takes it right, looking for the angle, and he's taken down at the 21. Off the fake, Stockton drives the pass to Adams inside the 10. The fullback gets involved, and Irwin is down inside the one. The rookie seventh rounder almost got his moment. Second and goal now. He will block for Jacobs and his second touchdown. Three rushing scores already for the Raiders. As a Viking fan, I'd like to uh, let you all know they combined this year. The Vikings had four running back rushing touchdowns on the season. Forcing the Jags to play catch up now, and it's going to be one of those days for Evan Ingram. Pressure coming, and Lawrence gets out of there, and he's wrapped up. And because that was a QB draw, it won't be a sack. Can't really afford three and outs at this stage, and that's what's going to happen. was all Jacobs on the last drive. Now Stockton will deliver it to Myers and a gain of seven. Play fake on second down and time. Jacobs doing a heck of a job. Deep down field. No way you dropped it. You can't drop that, Jacoby Myers. Come on. Josh Jacobs was in there doing his best impression of a guard and... That's just got to be a catch. Drives over. 
ETN gets the carry. Not sure how many more we'll see in this game, but a good start to the drive. Quick throw from Lawrence, and Ridley heard the footsteps there. The receivers have not given Lawrence much help in this game. I'm loving what our secondary's done. Oh, they're going under center. They must uh, see a uh, defensive play they've seen a lot. And Wilson takes down ETN. He hasn't done much as a pass rusher, but he does have three TFLs in the run game. Long way to go for Lawrence and company. Four-man rush. Downfield. It's picked off. Thrown right to Legereus Sneed. And he's taken down inside the 15. Two newcomers have interceptions today. And the Raiders look to go up even more. Spread out for Stockton. The rookie's going to have it here from the 13. Over the middle, Renfro. He's inside the five. On this third down, we're looking to throw it, I think. Third and one. Renfro in motion. Stockton, quick. It's caught for the first. Quiet day for Michael Mayer. He's already got a couple touchdowns. Jacob's the lone back. Stockton throwing. It is incomplete for Michael Mayer. Third and goal. Three receivers. And it will be a pass. Stockton caught for the touchdown. This time Myers hangs on. Stockton throws a pair in his debut as the Raiders are dominating the Jags. They just went for it on fourth down. And the Jaguars failed. The Raiders take over. And entering the game, making his debut, seventh round running back, Shakir Chaney. Renfro in motion, here is the rookie, his first run's a good one. He gets 11. As we go on as well, I'll be updating things like the accessories on players and helmets. I think I'm going to change Stockton's helmet. Chaney, not much here. Adams and Jacobs are done for the day. We do have Trey Tucker on the field right now. Renfro is in motion. Play fake. Stockton wants to air it out, and that's complete to Hunter Renfro. Back to pass again. Stockton off the mark. Stockton heading to the air on second down, and that one is caught as Ben Sims who is productive in preseason, makes the catch. I always love when we have these games where we can get a lot of the backups in there. I'm excited to see many of them. Good catch by Myers. I think he's had a pretty good game, even if he, he missed the one I really wanted him to have. And what a way to start the season. Obviously, we go through the offseason. We have all these changes off the mark for Ben Sims. This is a pretty strong way to open our time with the Raiders as Cheney gets stacked up for a loss. Stockton third and 12. Outside the numbers. Caught by Renfro. Touchdown. That's got to be his first touchdown in ages. He's played pretty well. I think everybody's having a good game. I have a lot of second teamers in there on defense now. I also really enjoy doing this because often it really shows how good your starters are. I have the starting D-line in because there isn't much depth there to begin with. But I did take out like our top corners, Devin White. So there's Hunter Jordan now in the middle. He was a day three pick of ours in the draft. It's ETN on the carry and Jordan gets his hands dirty in that tackle. We go to fourth down now with the Jaguar offense. Trevor Lawrence. He's got time. Looking long. Knocked away. Marcus Epps. Touchdown Raiders. Kirk Cousins throws one to Trey Tucker. 
as I don't think I've ever done one of these series where our first game sees us drop 48 points. A statement maker this year. We're trying to speed run the rebuild, apparently. But we got a big test coming up in next episode as we will play the Kansas City Chiefs. But that's going to do it for the debut of A.J. Ray as this team's coach. Denzel Stockton as the quarterback. And our time in this rebuild. A 48-17 beatdown of the Jaguars. It started out pretty slow. But once we woke up, the Jaguars had no answers. Let's take a look at the numbers from this one. As Stockton debuts with 214 yards and three touchdowns. Thought he had a really good game. Trevor Lawrence really didn't play all that well. Much of this yardage came in garbage time. On the ground, Josh Jacobs really got going for one possession, and I liked how we were able to finish drives in the red zone, not settling for field goals. If we can run the ball down there, we're going to be just fine. And then in the air, Evan Ingram had a busy first half, but outside of him, no one shined for Jacksonville. We had scores for our top three receivers, actually top four, and leading receiver was Jacoby Myers. Defensively, Divine Diablo racked up 11 tackles. We had a bunch of TFLs, Tyree Wilson with three of those, who also got a half sack in this game. Malcolm Kuntz, one and a half, and two interceptions. You really can't ask for a better debut. And we were missing two players as well. Robert Spillane and Max Crosby didn't even play. Everybody gets a thousand XP for this. And what impressed you the most about Denzel Stockton's debut? Poise under pressure, steady improvement. I'm going to go poise under pressure because I know disasters occur when pressure arrives in this game. You'll get some weird stuff. It is a necessity to get that higher as fast as you can. We look great in week one, but the Chiefs show up in week two, and they're also going to face us in week four. What is this schedule? Both Chiefs games in the first quarter of the season. How do we end it then? We take on Miami. We'll see what we're really made of next week when our defense goes up against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Here were the top performers from week one as Tua Tungavailoa and Desmond Ritter take home the offensive players of the week with Levante David on a new team and Jack Campbell for the defense. Stockton was one of three quarterbacks to throw three touchdowns in the opener. Uh, Lorenzo Hall, four interceptions in his starting debut for the Buccaneers. He's a hidden dev rookie. But that is a rough way to open. Derek Henry went for a buck 55. Kenneth Walker and Alvin Kamara not far behind. And the leading receiver, Bobby Wise. He's a rookie for Miami. So Tua's got another target in this offense. And he's nowhere near the speed of Waddle, Tyreek, A-Chain. We're still in the early stages of the rebuild. I'm really excited to see what this series can become, though. Great first game today, and we'll really be put to the test next episode. Please leave a like and let me know what you thought of one of the first true episodes here in the series. If you enjoy this and want more content like it, subscribe to the channel. Check out my Oakland Raiders MLB The Show series. There's a lot of hours of content there. And I will see you all next time later this week with more Raiders Franchise Rebuild. Have a great day.